Hello. Um, so we've been hearing that a lot of people have been running out of space on their virtual machines. And uh, rather than just post directions on how to solve that, um, I want to explain some general underlying principles about storage first. And, and then I'll actually walk you through the steps of doing it. But I actually want you to understand what the commands are doing uh, rather than just kind of following them without understanding. Because then if something goes wrong, you'll be able to have a better shot of troubleshooting and Googling for things, especially after this course is over. Um, so there's some terms that, um, that I want to talk about, and those are memory, storage, disk, partition, file system, and virtual disk. You might think you have some idea of what some of these mean, uh, but a lot of these are actually um, being misused in practice. And so it'll provide some clarity if we use these terms correctly. Um, so the first distinction is between memory and storage. Uh, memory is referring to some space uh, backed by the hardware on the left. So that's RAM. Um, it's really fast to store data in memory. Uh, but if you reboot, all of that data is gone, right? So you wouldn't, for example, have files um, inside of memory. Um, but if I'm running a Python program and I have a list, that list is in memory, right? The list is gone um, when I restart the computer or even just restart the Python program. And it's fast to ask it, uh, access a list. Um, in contrast, storage is for files. The data stays there a long time. Um, now, if you're trying to pip install something and you run out of storage space, you would hope that you did some error, like, hey, not enough storage. But uh, people have been getting uh, the confusing message that, oh, you're out of memory. That's not quite accurate usage of the term memory versus storage, right? So you're running out of storage when you're trying to do these pip installs, uh, but you're getting an error, error about memory. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how uh, you know, storage is organized on a computer. So uh, when I buy a hard drive uh, and connect it to my computer, I get all these bits, right? A bit is just a zero or a one, and, um, and a group of eight bits together is a byte, right? That's why I'm trying to draw these spaces here of groups of eight bits. Um, and I can use those to store information. And if I wanted to, I could buy multiple hard drives and attach them to my computer, and that will give me more, uh, more space. Um, but there's a lot else that goes on beyond just the hardware. There's a lot of things happening in software that let us use these bytes. Um, one thing that we can do is we can take a single um, disk and break it into what is known as partitions. And uh, let's say I create two partitions on the same disk. It'll actually be a little confusing on Windows because I might boot up and I'll actually see it says there's two uh, drives, right? And if I create two partitions, it'll say this. I have a C drive and a D drive even if I only have one hard drive in my computer. Right? It's a little bit strange, right? But on Windows, a drive is just a partition. Um, on Linux, uh, the naming is a little bit different. So the whole uh, drive or the whole disk um, will be given some sort of name, often SDA. And uh, SDA stands for SCSI Disk A for historical reasons. We're gonna get into that. Um, but if I have one, one hard drive, then that would be called SDA. If I have a second hard drive, uh, that would be SDB, and so on and so forth, SDC, SDD. Um, uh, and when I break them up, they actually have a very sensible naming scheme, right? If I have two partitions on the SDA desk, then those will be named SDA1 and uh, SDA2, right? And I can store different things on both of those. Now, it's very common that your disk will have exactly one partition, right? It's kind of some special use cases when you'd want to break that up uh, that we won't get into, right? So normally we're going to have one partition SDA1 on our one hard drive, which is SDA. Now, on top of that partition, we can install a piece of software called a file system. And a file system uh, could either use part of a partition, like I'm showing here, uh, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes it can also use the whole partition. But when it does that, it's going to be using the, the bytes in that space to store uh, files. And so you can see here I have on the right, I have, um, you know, file B uh, is a relatively small file. Uh, file C is a larger file. File A is actually really big, and there wasn't space um, kind of to contiguously uh, write out that data. So that file got broken up into different parts. And, uh, and so one of the file system's jobs is to keep track of where a file is and where the various parts of that file are and to hide or abstract those details from the program, right? Um, I'll guarantee you some of the files you've read in your Python programs 
are broken up into different parts, like file A on your hard drive. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that because you have a file system that kind of hides those details from you, or the, the technical word is it abstracts those details away, right? So you can just, hey, I have file A and I can read it and I don't have to worry about that. That's the thanks to your file system. Okay, so typically, right, the file system is going to take up the whole partition and we'll have empty space and we'll fill that as we um, add more files and, and then maybe we delete files, we'll get empty space in other spots. Um, uh, maybe you remember the old days when you would have to manually uh, defragment your Windows computer. You'd be running a little program that uh, cleans up the file system and kind of pulls all files together. Right? Maybe it pulls all the parts of file A into the same place. Um, usually those things happen automatically um, on modern systems. Okay, so this has all been kind of thinking in terms of I'm running uh, a file system on my computer at home, maybe my laptop. What about when we're running um, in the cloud? So remember that what the cloud providers do, their business is to buy um, really powerful computers and that maybe they have a lot of CPUs, they have a lot of um, disk storage, and they break those storage and CPU resources into smaller bets and they package up those smaller parts and uh, as a virtual machine and then they rent that to people, right? So maybe, maybe there's this one cloud server, that's one computer that they bought uh, but many different people uh, might be having uh, their smaller virtual machines on there. And, and so how do they do that? Well, they, they might have this very large um, physical or, or real hard drive. And uh, maybe that's like, uh, you know, let's say it's 10 terabytes. Okay? Uh, maybe they broke that up into 10 one terabyte chunks, each of which goes to a different virtual machine. Now, this gives us a, a cool opportunity because after you've already started your virtual machine, you can change the size of your virtual disk. You can pay uh, to make it larger. Okay? You can't really make it smaller, right, for various reasons. Don't try that or you're going to lose data. Uh, but you can, you can make it bigger if you're willing to pay for that. Um, right? Of course, you can't you know, change the size of your hard drive um, on your computer regularly. So, so here the picture I'm drawing, right? I have two virtual machines. On the one on the left, there's the virtual desk. That's a chunk of that real physical desk. And on that virtual desk for the virtual machine, um, there's one partition. And on top of that one partition, there's one file system. So if we wanted to have more space, because maybe we have a bunch of large files and we're running out of space, um, there's a three-step process that we'll have to pay for. Um, and it goes like this. The first thing we can do is we can go to the Google Cloud Console and pay to increase the virtual disk size. Um, if you don't go crazy, that's not going to be a lot of money. Uh, next, we can uh, sign into our virtual machine uh, with SSH and run some commands. Um, we can run the grow partition command to increase that red box inside of there, right? So now the partition is bigger. And then the third step is we have to run the resize to file system command, and that will increase that file system uh, within the partition. And if you do those three steps, then all of a sudden you're going to have more space and you're going to be able to install more PIP packages. Okay, so let's actually do this. We're going to do those three steps. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here to my Google Cloud Console. And um, let me click on this menu on the left and go to, um, where am I headed? I'm headed to the Compute Engine and then Virtual Machine Instances. And, uh, and I just have one running right now. It's called uh, Virtual Machine Instance 1. Let me look at that. And... Um, and uh, there's a bunch of information about it. And uh, some of that information uh, tells me about my boot disk, right? What virtual hard drive um, am I running on, right? It's telling me the size here too. It's 25 gigabytes. I've actually already increased the size. It starts off at 10 gigabytes um, uh, as a default. Now, let me actually head over to SSH and kind of look at it from that perspective. Right, so I'm going to head over here. I'm going to say SSH. And, um, and uh, you can see that uh, next time I sign in after this video, I'm gonna be doing some security updates, right? You should make sure you're always doing that app to get upgrade, uh, but I'm not trying to do that as part of this video. Um, so when you're here, um, if you wanna see the uh, disk usage, there's this df command, you run that, and um, it shows you all of this stuff. It's showing you these different uh, devices 
that are, are in use and, and then it's showing you well how much space are you using and how much space is still free and in what percentage of it is used right so if you're at 100 percent, there's no room to expand um now it, it turns out that there are all these kind of like pseudo devices or pseudo file systems that are running there's not an actual um hard drive not even a virtual hard drive in, in play um so actually the only one here that really matters is this SDA1. That's my main virtual disk and, uh, and well, the one partition on that disk. So this is telling me how much space that's using. I see I'm 77% uh, full right now. That's what you're gonna be looking for. Um, now, when you run this df command, you can actually say dash h, and this flag or argument says, um, print it off like a human wants to read it. I don't know why that's not the default. Of course, a human wants to read it. Um, if there's some program doing checkout or put or something, I feel like that should have to pass a special flag. Uh, but I do dash H and, and why is that nice? Well, now when I look at these numbers, right, it actually tells me that my size is 25 gigabytes versus that, right? That would make me do some math converting bytes to uh, gigabytes. So I see I have 25 gigabytes and I'm using 19 uh, gigabytes of that currently. All right, so this 25 gigabytes is matching up over here with the 25 gigabytes here. So remember, the first step is that I have to, through the console, console uh, increase this, this size, right? So I'm gonna click on this hard disk, this virtual hard disk, and, um, and I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna edit it here like so. And, uh, and when I edit it, uh, I ha can come up here and I have to change the size. Do not make that smaller, right? That will that will cause problems. I don't know if they'll even allow you to try it, but if they do, they may break things for you. So only make it larger. So I'm gonna make it uh, 30 gigabytes now. Now don't, don't go crazy, right? If you do something like that, you end up paying a lot, right? So, so just increase as much as you need. Um, if you're curious about the pricing, uh, they have that, right? Every big cloud provider has all this pricing information. And, um, and honestly, it gets complicated. It depends on what kind of virtual device you have, how fast it is. Um, here I have a standard persistent disk is my type. So I would be looking at this, right? I guess here I'm paying uh, four cents per gigabyte. And, and of course that matters too where this is, is located, right? I'm in US Central 1A, right? Um, which is what this is here. So this is a data center running in Iowa right now. So I see that, um, you know, I'm adding an extra um, five gigabytes. And so five gigabytes by four cents is 20 cents. Okay, so I'm paying 20 cents more uh, per month. So not a big deal. And of course, this is not going to affect you because you uh, probably signed up with that extra $300 as a promotional credit or something like that. But even if I were paying, it would be like 20 cents a month. Not important. Um, now, if you're in a different region, for example, in Los Angeles, you might pay slightly more, right? So you can compute these things. But generally, if we're talking a few gigabytes, uh, it, it's going to be cheap enough so that maybe I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. That's 30 gigabytes now instead of 25. And I'm gonna scroll down here and save that. Okay, so that has, um, well, it's still running. It's updating my virtual desk. Uh, and now I think that's done, is it? It's doing something here. There, now it's actually done. And uh, now I need to come back here. And if I run this command again, I see that this is still 25 gigabytes because all I've done is I increased the size of SDA. I have not increased the size of SDA1 or the file system that's on top of SDA1. So let me do that. So they actually have some directions here on how to do that, and they're a little bit too complicated, but I may pull out the um, relevant pieces for us. They have some other commands here like this, uh, uh, you know, ls, list files, ls block, uh, lists block devices or files. So I can actually see here, um, here's my 30 big gigabyte drive, right? That change. And then it has this big SDA1 partition on it. I don't care about these other ones, right? So, so what I want to do is I want to increase this partition, SDA1, so that I use more of that 30 gigabytes, right? So they, they give me an example of a command over here called grow partition, right? And I can scroll down and I can look at it. And I can see um, here, here's what's relevant, right? I can say sudo grow partition. Then I have to say what device I'm doing and then a partition number. All right, so let me actually grab this. And I want to increase the size of SDA. And I want to do partition one. Okay, so when I do that, 
and uh, and it ran. It increased the size. If I run it again, it's like, well, it can't be grown anymore. You're using all the size. Now, just one detail here, right? Like when I say this, it looks like a lot like a file. Uh, but in Linux, there's something called pseudo files. Uh, they're fake files, and they represent different things about the system. Like maybe there's a pseudo file for hard drive, right? That's not an actual real file. And here, under slash dev, that stands for devices. These are not real real files. A little bit strange. It takes a little bit getting used to. Um, but let me let me run this ls block command again, and hopefully this will be using more of that 30 gigabytes. SDA1 will eat up more of that space. I may run. Where where is it? There it is. And uh, and I see indeed it is right of that 30 gigabytes. Now I'm using 29.9 uh, for that partition. So what if I go back to this cam and I had before uh, this df dash h? I see it still says 25 gigabytes. And that's because I've only done two steps so far, right? One command step I've done is I increased the virtual disk on the con console over here. The second step I did is I increased the partition. I, so I made SDA one bigger. The very last thing I have to do is, is this. I have to extend the size of the file system or grow it. And so how do I do that? I have to copy this command and then I have to say SDA uh, partition number one, right? So I run that. SDA partition one, and uh, let's run that. If I run it again, it's like, well, I can't make it any larger. I've already used all the space. And so now if I run if I run this df-h command again, I'm hoping that instead of 25 gigabytes with only 5.6 free, uh, this is gonna increase to 30 gigabytes with you know something like 10.6 free. And I, and I do that, I see it's rounding up. Okay, so now I have close to 30 and 11 gigabytes free. And now if I wanted to, I could, you know, go back and do, uh, you know, whatever big uh, package I was doing before that I didn't have space before. before. Okay, so um, feel free to follow through this on your own. Uh, I, I highly recommend backing up any files to your laptop before you do this, just in case you do something wrong and accidentally delete, um, delete data, right? It's easy to mess this stuff up.